Speak more without, without, speak more without words. Yeah, it's really part of it. That aspect of talking, sometimes we say more than we actually say with our words. It's called nonverbal communication. It's involved with eye contact, facial expression, body movements, time, space, territory. You know, one time there was a guy, and I know he meant well, but he was a friend of mine, and, and but he had a space issue. I'm a typical American. I like to have that 18 to 24 in space when I'm talking to somebody. He did it. And so we're in a crowded room, and he's talking to me, and he's getting closer, and he's getting closer, and he's getting closer. And he actually is in my face. I could feel the spit on my cheeks and everything else. And, and he, he was getting closer, and I was finally up against the wall. And I finally said, okay, yes, whatever you say. And he got it eventually that I wasn't comfortable. Okay, sometimes that's space, sometimes the territory, some of the, the, the appearance. Sometimes a receiver interprets or misinterprets what is being said because the body is speaking so loudly. Yes, I totally agree with you. Well, no, the head is something different than what you're actually saying. Okay, the two don't match, and people know that. Research have long held that human resolve clashes between the verbal and nonverbal, that they trust the nonverbal component more than the words that are spoken. There's some study that was made several years ago at UCLA, and they what they determined that in the absence of clear communication, that people will 92.7% of the time interpret what is being said by the context of the nonverbal communication. Now, by the way, the study is often misinterpreted by people. The reality is if the words aren't clear to the person receiving them, which happens an awful lot, because remember that 25 to 50% of us, the words that are said, people forget. But the other part is the fact that you're gonna say it all within the context of what is being said. You're gonna pay attention to a different body language. You gotta be careful before attaching specific meanings or gestures to actions because the behavior depend on the context and one's own cultural background. I really know a lot about nonverbal communication, but my skills are really American. They do not apply well with Asian countries. I, I simply cannot get the read because I can't connect the nonverbal skills with the language that's being said. I can pick up some European, I can pick up some South American, but really the culture that you're raised in, you're gonna be more comfortable with the nonverbal cues that are there. And we'll talk more about the different cultural diversity aspects of it. So sometimes you may know what's happening and you may interpret the nonverbal skills based upon your own focus, your own rose colored glasses, so to speak, that how you're seeing things, but somebody else may mean something totally different by what is being said. But you cross your arms like this. A lot of times we interpret that this is a matter of oh, that person really is not engaged or anything else. They don't care what I say. It could be that they're cold. Okay, sometimes we'll interpret things in a wrong way. So you got to pay attention. But a lot of times we have the eye contact and North American culture, sustained eye contact tr has trust and admiration. It's a sign that signals brief eye contact, only fear and stress. Prolonged eye contact or staring, though, can be intrusive and intimidating in other cultures. Sometimes staring at somebody is fighting time. So you may be careful about staring somebody else from another culture in the eyeball face to face, because it could be that you're challenged them in their authority and their position. Be careful on the aspect of it, but we really do want to make eye contact on a regular basis with an American crowd, especially because it does connotate the fact that you care what is being said. Good eye contact enables the messenger to see if the receiver is paying attention, showing respect, responding favorably, or if they're be feeling distressed. My personal preference is always to have a class face to face because I get an opportunity to see if I'm connecting with the students. Here, this is called an asynchronous format. In other words, you can watch it anytime you want. I can't see you whatsoever on this video. I have no idea if I'm connecting with you whatsoever. I can't see your face. I can't see your body language. I can't see your eyes. If you're bored, I don't know if you're playing with your cell phone or playing with your dog, throwing a frisbee for all I know. The reality is that there's no connection because I don't have any eye contact and I can't see you. So a lot of it really is a big deal. The facial expression can display over 250,000 expressions. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, people hide your feelings. Sometimes you have a poker face. 
Somebody even has a song about watch my poker face. So the reality in North America, a lot of Americans, we display our emotions openly and often unintentionally. Sometimes it's almost disrespectful with other cultures to sit down and show that you're not following the proper sequence. You're not looking at the context. You're not looking who is the most senior person among you, who is the most high ranking person. You forget about that because you're an American and you just blather it out. Americans are very, very opinionated and sometimes speak too much when they should be quiet. Raising the lowering eyebrows, squinting the eyes, swallowing nervously, clenching the jaw, oh, covering your mouth. One time I was in negotiations um, and, and I, my, the other chief negotiator were across the table and, and he was so easy to read. I did a couple things. I would lay out my hand like this on the table. And by laying my hand out, in American culture, an open palm signifies that I'm being open and you can trust me. So I just kind of did that. And he was going like this. And now this is typically, not all the time, but usually what it means is that, you know, I want to say something, but I'm kind of blocking it with his finger over here. So I would call him by name. He says, did you have something to say? Well, yeah, yeah, it's a matter of, and, and he had no idea I was reading this. It's a, it's just, and so then he expressed himself and actually he was very good and we had a good negotiation period, but I called him out on the fact he was thinking and not communicating. Now, sometimes something like this over here, when you're blocking your mouth, you may be something angry, or it could be one of these things of like this, he's just thinking, just be over here. So this depends how you do it. But in this case, he was blocking his mouth, which normally is indication from a nonverbal perspective of the fact that he wanted to say something, but was stopping himself from saying it. Now, that being said, we got the hang of the rhythm. We got through contract quickly by having these dialogues, especially when I had to call him out and get him to sit down and then communicate even better. Leaning forward suggests attentiveness and interest. When we talk about interviews, we'll talk about the aspect you never sit in with your back to the back of the chair. You should be a little bit anxious during the job interview and keep on the front two thirds of your chair. It helps you sit down and communicate that you are attentive to everything being said. You don't want to ever build your barriers up. Put your fingers out on top of the table like this because you're building the fence, trying to keep everything out, trying to hide your personal emotions in the process. You never want to do anything like this. We call this steepling. You don't want to ever do this in the American culture. It is arrogant and it's rude. But in South America, it's okay. It depends sometimes as to what the culture is where you're coming from. Sometimes something, things are different in other cultures. When speaking, make sure your upper body is aligned with the person to whom you're talking. Turn your body and sit there and face them. That is always respectful in all cultures. But watch the eye contact because of the too much silent eye contact staring somebody right in the eyes can be off-putting for some people. The gestures, erect posture, always sends a message of confidence, really the aspect of being confident, diligent, and strength. Avoid tilting your head to the side when listening or making an important point because people may not think that you trust what you're saying or trust what you're hearing, that you may be a little crooked in the process. So be careful in what you're saying because people may misinterpret it. Time, space, I mentioned about the time aspect of it. But if you ever watch some of the videos pre-pandemic, okay, in, in Japan, in the subway, they hired people and, and they typically had a blazer on and they had white gloves and their job was to stuff people into the subway during rush hour. And people had no problem being shoulder to shoulder. I would freak out if that were the case. That's a different culture. And with, with that culture, that is okay. And they're comfortable with having that close proximity where I would have a really difficult time coping with that. Time, how we structure. If you show up on time, I was always told by, by, by my dad growing up, he says, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you really shouldn't even show up. And that was a big deal, okay, except for the fact if you show up on time in the South American meeting, you're considered to be rude. As a matter of fact, if you talk business during a meal, you're rude. You can only talk business at dessert time or afterwards. You don't do it over, over a meal. It's interesting how you do that. There's more. I teach an international business class. If you're interested in that type of aspect of it, make certain you take that or something similar later on in your academic career. 
territory is a big thing about the specific spot or space around us. Sometimes if you're going to a regular thing on, on a weekly basis, you have a place you sit and somebody sits there, they took my spot. My wife and I have a favorite restaurant that we go to and we like to have our own waiter and we like to have a certain spot in there and somebody else is there. We just glare at them the whole time and we throw food at them. Uh, not really. We don't even glare at them. But anyway, with that being said, sometimes that territory is an important thing to us. It's same thing comes across when it comes down to a business document. We're going to talk about how to format a memo properly. We're talking about making your email appeal properly and making certain that it's clean and, and not sloppy. There is a, a pattern and there's a constant pattern nonstop when you go through. We're going to call it really the memo sandwich of, of positive, negative, positive. We'll talk about that. But a sloppy email sends a nonverbal communication that you're in a hurry and don't care so much about the content or how the other person feels. That's always a mistake. Envelopes or postage, paper quality printing, that can, can suggest messages that are routine, important, or simply junk mail. Personal appearance, the way you look. Are you prepared to sit down and give your best foot forward for the person you're going to be talking to? If not, they'll notice that as well. So speak more without words. Okay, Eye contact, show your proper uh, posture, reduce the physical barrier between you and the person you're talking to, improve your decoding skills, probe for more information, interpret the nonverbal meanings in context of what's being said. Associate with different cultures, that'll help you sit down and be able to communicate very well and appreciate the power of appearance. So keep these things in mind, eye contact, posture, reduce physical barriers, improve your decoding skills, probe. If you don't know what's being said, probe and ask questions, interpret the nonverbal meanings, associate different cultures, and always appreciate that power of appearance. You can also learn an awful lot about how to speak more without words. Take care.